I'm here with Peter Jones of Tenebrooks. He's the CEO. Peter, what do you do for the security industry? Well, we've just uh, developed and are now starting to ship uh, a new kind of security camera that takes a different approach than uh, security imaging up to now. We think it offers some benefits that you can't get in a traditional method. And how did you start, or when did you start Tenebrex? Uh, in the early 90s. Uh, the initial technology that we started with was a way of hiding reflections from military optics. By military optics, visual but optics for laser? Yeah, binoculars and rifle scopes where uh, reflection off of the glass can give away your position to the bad guys. Um, and our, our, what they call R, it's the Army gave it an acronym, anti-reflection devices look like an opaque surface, but from the inside of the optic, um, there's no loss in resolution and uh, it hides the reflections off the glass, or the, and um, but still lets you see un affected through the optic. So they uh, are there used extensively now by our military and NATO and other allies. It's a way of camouflaging uh, the optics so that the, your foe doesn't know where you are. And Tenebrex has been a, a government contractor for most of the time in its existence? Yeah, we've sell both commercially and have uh, government contracts. And how did you get started on the D7-180 camera? Uh, it actually came out of that military background. As I said, we, hide, we have a way of hiding reflections from uh, optical surfaces. And uh, some folks wanted to put a bulletproof window in a Bradley fighting vehicle and, uh, so that the people inside could orient themselves before they exited under fire. There's another advantage of... Uh, distributive imaging that we think has a lot of meaning in the security imaging field. When you start to get up to very high megapixel count with a single sensor, you've got to send generally all that data downstream. Uh, we have 6.5 nominally 7 megapixels in our camera. We're running it at 15 frames a second, but we're not sending all of that data downstream at one time. So, well, why not? Well, really one thing is the issue of monitors. At 72 or 96 DPI, uh, our D7 camera, you'd need a, to show it all at full resolution, you'd need a monitor that was, oh, four and a half feet wide, something in that area. There are no monitors that big. And what we're doing is really taking an approach like your own human vision. Your, your vision is really a two part system. The, most of the sensors, most of the area in your retina is, has a low resolution rods and they give you your peripheral view from 240 to 180 degrees depending on you know, the physical structure of your head. And you can move uh, your eyes 90 degrees, 45 degrees aside in the eye socket. Um, you only have high resolution in the center of your field of view part of your retina that's covered with the cones where you have your color vision. And uh, so you have the impression that everything you see is sharp, but that's because when, you th when you're looking at, when you're, you're interested in one area of your 140 to 180 degree field of view, your brain instantly turns your eyes in the socket so that the fovea, the high resolution part of your eye is lying on the area of interest. And that that fovea is really six to eight degrees wide, but you can fovea your eyes in your socket. So wherever you look, that's sharp. But you're not losing awareness of everything around you. You still have that wide 180 degree view. So mm -hmm. if someone walks next to you or someone opens a door to your side, you're still aware that's going on. And that's sort of the approach we're taking with the D7 camera. We have all of these pixels on target, but what we're sending is two kinds of resolution. One is a lower resolution, downsampled, uh, 1280 by 320, 180 degree view. And that gives you situational awareness that you always have that. You're always seeing the whole room. You know what's going on. And then within that, you can select uh, from two to four high resolution areas, the full resolution of the sensor, and you can place those wherever you want.
uh, in that we're sort of going one better than your eyes because you have one fovea, you have one high resolution area in your eye, we're giving you from two to four. So uh, what this allows us to do is put seven megapixels on target. Let's say you're in a convenience store. You have one camera can give you a 180 degree view of the room and then you have a high resolution area of interest you can place at the doorway. So now you're capturing the face and the height of everyone who comes in. You put one high resolution window on the cashier and the cash drawer area so you can see the cash drawer, the currency, you know, what's happening in front of the cashier. And then mm -hmm. let's say put another area of interest uh, on the stockroom door so you know if anyone's going in. Okay. Or at a bank, you can do a small bank, you can do the lobby with one camera and put four high resolution areas uh, for the four teller positions. So one camera can gather that all. So we're sending uh, less than two megabits a second from the camera. But what we have on target, you have the use of those, all of those pixels, that the seven megapixels on target, and you demand the high frame rate without trashing your. Uh, your network, your IP network. We're not trying to stuff all those pixels down because you don't need all of those pixels at the same time. Right. right. What our camera can do in the background is let's say you're saying, well, I don't, I mean, in my application, I don't know where uh, those area of interest may change or if no one's, uh, I, I want to see the whole place, but I want to look at it uh, later in detail. And the way we handle that is we can send a second stream that's the full resolution at one frame per second. And that's sent in the background to be recorded and used later. So if we go back, you know, the other thing we're doing is we're taking the 1280, 320, 180 degree view and the two to four full resolution detail views. And we're packaging all of that into one standard 720p HD frame, which people can deal with. You can deal with that recording, you can deal with monitors. So that's one window, where it's a composite window that we're assembling in the camera, and that's what we send down stream uh, to the recording or video management software or to a browser where you're just watching this or recording it from a, from a PC. So that's our approach. Down the, it's a, it, this approach gives us a lot of flexibility. This is our first camera. We think it offers... Uh, some real advantages. You're replacing between two to, excuse me, from uh, three to five regular cameras with one camera. Absolutely. And so you have three 60 degree field of view cameras covering a room, and then the equivalent of one or two PTZs, all sort of rolled into one in the D7. Um, we have some other advantages down the road. In 2011, we expect to radically increase the resolution of the camera by going to larger, larger or higher resolution sensors. Okay. And we'll have a uh, 25 and a 50 megapixel version. Now, imagine how band, how you know, how a network would be trashed trying to send 50 megapixels at 15 frames a second, and right. uh, and there are no sensors that can do that. Um, but again, we would never, we wouldn't be sending more than that HD frame because we're giving you the 180 view that fits on a monitor plus multiple detail views that gives you very high resolution. And also down the road, we'll be able to work uh, with video analytics to actively and interactive, uh, actively place the uh, the detail views. So, for instance, capturing areas of interest that are moving through the scene uh, or. Uh, areas of interest have changed depending on what's happening in your environment. But but again, you'll you'll be able to um, only have your computer analyzing those windows within that digital zoom. So it's actually it's actually going to be a lot easier for your system to to track the windows within the larger package. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes, and we can start to put more. There's some, a lot more intelligence in these little micro sensors, uh, facial location, 